Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. We are in Denmark this week and we are having a tour by Tiny House Living and it's Michael who's a builder and he's gonna show us around in this beautiful tiny house. It is, I think, the first and the only tiny house uh, company in Denmark. So if there's another company out there, reach out to me. This house was constructed to actually be okay by all the building codes in Denmark and the most of Europe. So let's take a tour. Hi, I'm Michael and welcome to our tiny house. I will show you the house which is 18 square meters inside and 10 square meters with a loft. Welcome to our hall and our living room and dining area. We have here a fold-out table meaning that you can have additional people come and visit you and you will then be able to have dinner for four. We think that's very nice. Usually we use this to, what can you say, for two people, it's, it's usable for office, dinner, only for two people, you can sit and watch out the window. If you want to be four persons, then it's no problem, two here, two there. In the decoration of our house, we value very much to have a large area for storage, so we have um, put in a lot of closets on both sides. Here we also have some hangers for shirts if you don't want it to have it somewhere else. But there's a lot of storage. We have around 12 cabinets plus all the storage which we have in the kitchen. The dining area is uh, part of the hallway. The other part of the hallway is the storage which we have the cabinets for uh, clothes etc. And we have the heating pump. We have decided to go for a heating pump because the energy consumption is less than for a wooden stove and propane stoves. And according to the building code, we definitely needed to have as low as energy consumption as possible or whatever. That was why we went for the heating pump instead of the other possibilities. Okay, Michael, so you've done this company in Denmark with tiny houses and the rules and regulations in Denmark are a lot different than in the States. So there are a lot more things you have to factor in when you have to get it approved. So what has that process looked like for you? We did, when we decided to adapt the tiny house concept, we realized that building codes and regulations have never been made for building tiny houses. Mm -hmm. Meaning that all the rules and regulations have to fulfill the same requirements for building an ordinary house for a full-time family living yeah. Uh, with, on a foundation. So as so. soon as it's a house that you want to live in, then you have to have it zoned as a regular building. So yes. they're the same For full-time house and, and living. Yeah, you can't so just forth. do it as an RV. No. Then you have to move it, you told me, like every six weeks or yeah, something? Yeah, in Denmark it's it's like if you have, the, have it stayed for more than six weeks, you need to have a building permit. The reason we want to do this because uh, fulfilling the full-time requirements for an ordinary house yeah. in a tiny house means that we can have them approved for anywhere in Europe yeah. and that's nice. Danish or most European uh, building codes, they don't factor in just safety and uh, construction and stuff like that. They also factor in uh, energy consumption. So you can only have a certain amount of energy consumption if you want to follow the rules. This is our kitchen. We prioritize very much a large kitchen. We love to cook. Therefore, we want to have a full stove. We want to have a large refrigerator and a lot of room for storage. We have a traditional good oven, full size, a very good induction stove. We have chosen to have a good vent for air circulation for the steam to go out when we're cooking so we don't, it doesn't get, get steamed in here. And of course a lot of drawers, everything which you need. A very large desk also for cooking and preparing everything when we make large meals. We have decided to go for uh, two minor windows 
for the start. To be honest, we're actually thinking of replacing one of the windows with a large window because we think that the view would be nice to have and it will give more light to the house. It's all a work in progress when it's yes. a small space. Precisely. Every inch counts. Yes. Our priority when we chose the fridge was to have a small consumption of electricity and also it should be nice and it should be the largest one which we could get and it has a freezer at the top and a refrigerator at the bottom. So what you've done is you've you've had the outside shell approved for full-time all year round living. Yes. And with rules that apply to all of Europe because you've applied them to the Danish rules and they are apparently the stricted ones. Stricted yes, ones. very strict rules. <laughs> okay. Uh, normally we should use 300 millimeters of rock wool, for yeah. instance. But if you use two times isolation, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you if you use two times 300 millimeters. You have very little space left in, in the tiny house. It would be like a sliver. It would be a like real a... tiny house. Yeah. So we decided to go for something called uh, Cool Term, which is used for space stations. Extremely expensive in Europe, yeah. but it works in the house yeah. and it, it's fulfilling the building codes. Yeah, that's, okay. Yes. But that also means that the tiny houses, they are quite a lot more expensive than your tiny houses in yeah the states probably mostly yeah because of the uh, the regulations for full-time houses in in, uh, in europe or denmark um, and to fulfill them we use approximately we can't use exactly the same method as uh, in the, the us mm. uh, so we have to put on approximately 50 percent to the material prices yeah. <sighs> but yeah. but nevertheless we want to do it because it's, it's a very good very good concept and we yeah. think it's very good to go tiny better quality items that can do the same insulation the problem is also or the space. challenge yeah. the challenge was that uh, with a small space and the ordinary uh, electrical installation mm -hmm. we needed to lower our energy consumption we still have lights we still mm -hmm. have a dishwasher we still have a, a dryer and uh, everything else what what you have in, a, in an ordinary house with a foundation but when we then tightened it up in a small area, they're very, very strict regulation. That's why we also use the A++ yeah, uh, all the Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Between our kitchen and the dining area, we have the living area. We decided to build this couch on top of the wheel arch because then it's, we have a nice place for resting close by to the kitchen and the living area. You can read a book, you can look outside. And by the way, we have already decided to change this window to a large window. And joining to the couch, we have some storage area as well. We have built it below the stairs. We have hangers for shirts or short jackets. We have a few books that have room for shoes beneath. We also have these two areas, which we are not using at the moment, but we want to make drawers here or here for wallets and keys and stuff like that. So when you come back home, you can just open, throw it in, and then you can, then you always know where your stuff are. This is not the sleeping loft. This is the master bedroom. Welcome to the master bedroom. And we have decided to place it like this because then we have a bit space here. And when I sleep over here, my wife can sleep over here, she's a bit smaller, so she doesn't bunk her head in the, in the top. And I don't either, even though I'm a big guy. But it's a nice place. We have uh, four or three windows up here, so we can look out. And actually, it's, it's also very cozy. This is the storage in the master bedroom. There's one for her and one for him. In Denmark, you can't move it with an ordinary truck. That's right. We have rules in Denmark where trucks in the US, which are suitable for, for, for towing 10 tons, they can be used for it. First of all, the trucks are three times as expensive. Yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, that's heavy. And there's this crazy rule that you can only you are only allowed to tow three and a half ton. So we have to use a lorry or 
like a regular right. farm tractor yeah. to come and move it. Yes. So if you're planning on building a tiny house in Denmark or in Europe, then you're probably going to have to look into... Like, it's a movable house, but you probably wouldn't move it that often. No. It's so that you can have your own space, your own outer walls, you don't have neighbors or people living upstairs or downstairs and you can walk out to a yard. It's All the lovely it's benefits on yeah. tiny house living that we yes. love. Then we have the lounge area for relaxation. This is the lounge area. It's around three square meters. You can be two persons up here. You can watch television. We have a large television. And then let's go to the bathroom, which is close to the hallway as usual. We decided to go for a large bathroom. And let me tell you one thing, I'm two meter. So it's really spacious out here. So we have an ordinary toilet, flush toilet. We have the washing machine, traditional American style, because we think it's the best concept. And of course, a little storage. We decided to go for a traditional shower cabinet. For a sink, we chose one with a lot of storage beneath. The, the, so the vanity is specially selected for this. But it is a spacious bathroom. It's a bit more than three square meters. And let me tell you, that's spacious for most Danish apartments. So <laughs> it's good. There's a lot of people in Denmark and Scandinavia and Europe, there's like a growing interest in all of this stuff. So, and obviously it's very dense over here. There are a lot of people and not that many square kilometers, <laughs> like the whole continent. Um, so tiny houses, they are definitely here to stay. And it's just about getting all the politicians on board with changing some of the laws or being willing to put these structures in urban environments and letting people see them and test test out this tiny life. I've talked know? a lot to the members of uh, some members of the parliament, mm -hmm. and actually next week we will have a member of the parliament come and stay over for a night. That's very to nice. see. Thank you guys for checking out this video this week, and I hope that you'll go. I'll leave a link below to uh, Michael's uh, website so you can go and check them out. So you can you go to, to the. Facebook or you can book this place actually on Airbnb and I'll leave that link down below so come and check out this house if you're in Denmark and or Scandinavia anywhere uh, come check it out and see if it if tiny living is something for you okay we'll see you guys next time bye